and cleanse us from every blemish and save our souls, O blessed one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth will show forth your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, from heaven above and for the salvation of our souls let us pray to the Lord for peace throughout the whole world for the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the union of them all let us pray to the Lord for this holy church and for those who enter it with faith devoutness and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, let us pray to the Lord. For our God-loving Bishop Gregory, for our esteemed priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For the honorable government of our country and all civil authorities and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city, village and country, 
and for those who with faith dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. For healthful seasons, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, and for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed, and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God, and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you are do all glory, honor, and adoration to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Fulfill this petition of your service. Of your service, that are beneficial to them, giving us in this world the knowledge of the truth and life eternal in the world to come. We are all our gracious and we love mankind and to you remain our glory. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, our endeavor and our ages and ages of life.
The reading is from the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, we who are strong in faith should be patient with the scruples of those whose faith is weak. We must not be selfish. Each should please his neighbor so as to do him good by building up his spirit. Thus, in accord with the scripture, Christ did not please himself. The reproaches they uttered against you fell on me. Everything written before our time was written for our instruction that we might derive hope from the lessons of patience and the words of encouragement in the scriptures. May God, the source of all patience and encouragement, enable you to live in perfect harmony with one another according to the spirit of Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and voice you may glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then as Christ accepted you for the glory of God. be attentive as we listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. At that time when Jesus was passing by, two blind men followed him, crying aloud and saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly charged them, See that no one knows it. But they went away and spread his fame throughout all that district. As they were going away, behold, a dumb demonic was brought to Jesus, and when the demon had been cast out, the dumb man spoke, and the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the prince of demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity of the people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, Christ is among us. Fake news. Unless you are hiding under a rock, living in a monastery, 
or don't own a television or computer, you surely have heard this fra phrase being used, fake news. Well, fake news consists of a deliberate misinformation or hoaxes spread on broadcast news or on social media. Fake news is written and published with the intent to mislead a person in order to damage an agency or a person and is often used for financial or political gain. Very often it consists of a fact that has been distorted or spun in a way to make people choose sides and often leading to arguments and hatred. But fake news is nothing new. It has been around since the fall of man. We see a perfect example of fake news in this morning's gospel lesson from St. Matthew. When Jesus began his ministry on earth, his message was to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He taught in the synagogues and the cities and, on the and in the villages. He taught the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus healed all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. Of his most amazing miracles were the healing of those who were possessed by demons, as we heard in this morning's gospel lesson. However, when the multitudes marveled and said, things like this were never seen in all of Israel, the Pharisees, on the other hand, out of jealousy, spread fake news, claiming that Jesus was the devil himself. They said he casts out demons by the ruler of demons. They shouted, and in every encounter with the Pharisees where the a demonic was healed, the same rhetoric was repeated. He cast out demons by the ruler of demons. Jesus tried to reason with them saying that every kingdom divided against itself will not stand. In other words, why would Satan cast out Satan, one of his own demonic angels? That would only bring him ruin, but they would not listen. Blessed Theophilac wrote about the Pharisees that their words were the height of stupidity. Father Thomas Hopko, in one of his many lectures, made this statement. He said, if you tell someone a lie, they will question it. However, if you tell them the same lie over and over and over again, they will start to believe it. And eventually, they will accept it as the truth. They may even tell you that they were the ones who came up with the idea. What, it is, what is it about us human beings? The truth of Jesus Christ is so simple and direct, yet we will follow any charismatic person who speaks falsely, but with conviction. We listen to them and not to what the church teaches. We say, ah, oh, the church, they're just made man-made rules as if the Constitution of the United States of America and current opinions are not man-made. Here is a good rule, a good rule of thumb. If someone has to use too many words to convince you that they are right, then run away, because the Lord's truth is simple and just. We learn this from the first part of this morning's gospel lesson. Two men, two blind men, were following Jesus, crying out and pleading, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus Christ waited till they were in private, and he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Now what is most unusual about this story is what Jesus says next. He tells them, and he sternly warns them, See that no one knows it. See that no one knows it. Now this was not the first time Jesus gave such a commandment after healing someone. When he healed the men with leprosy, he also said to them, See that you tell no one. Why would Jesus say such a thing? Any person 
that with that type of power would use it to make a fortune. Yet Jesus' thought was to tell no one. The Holy Fathers of the Church write that Jesus healed them in private to teach us to avoid vainglory, to avoid that pat on the back. Also, in telling them to say nothing to anyone, Jesus teaches us the value of humility. We know from the Gospel that the two did tell, not out of disobedience, though, but only to the glory of God. We also learn to avoid gospel, gossip, which is another form of fake news. For so often, we add just a little bit to this story to make it a little more interesting, to give it a little pop. Exaggerating the facts makes it seem like we know more than the next guy. And before you know it, as it is passed on from gossip to gossip to the person, to the next person, to the next person, only a little bit of the truth remains. The rest is story. As we continue living in this modern technological world, let us remember not to be so quick to judge. Let us hold our opinion to ourselves on subjects until we learn the complete truth through investigation and through level-minded research. St. Paul says we must test the spirit don't always just accept it, test it to make sure that it is truly from God. Let us be careful of what we say and what we post on the Facebook and what we tweet and what we tell people, trying not to hurt or damage others with our words, which only brings more hatred into the world. But most of all, and most importantly, let us remember the words and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, as he said this about gossip. He said, you will be held accountable for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. You will be held accountable for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. No fake news here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say. O oh Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Furthermore, we pray for our holy ecumenical patriarch, Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and for our God-loving Bishop, Gregory, for our spiritual fathers and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ, for their welfare, peace, health, salvation, and for the remission of their sins, and that the Lord our God may prompt and help them in all things. Master of the harvest, who told us the harvest is rich and the laborers are few, call many to be your future priests. There are children to baptize, the sick to heal, the dying to care for, the bread of life to distribute, the word of God to teach, sins to forgive, and charity to be done in your name. Grant, O Lord, that many may respond to your call. Hear us and have mercy. Thank you. 
give their offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable church, for those who labor in its service, for those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who have shown us kindness, and for all Orthodox Christians. Merciful God, who loves mankind, and we give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. Represent the cherubim and who sing to the life giving Trinity the thrice holy hymn. Let us now lay aside all earthly cares that we may raise on high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and who sing to the life giving Trinity the thrice holy hymn. Let us now lay aside all earthly cares that we may raise on high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and who sing to the life giving Trinity the thrice holy hymn. Let us now lay aside all earthly cares, that we may raise on high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Fisher. 
Church, the honorable government of this country and its armed forces, the blessed and ever remembered founders and benefactors of this holy church, for the servants of God, those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Michelle Lucy, Ashley Zucchelli, the reader Noah Sackmar, Kenny Mesco, and Hannah Cook, for the servant of God, newly initiated, and to the Orthodox faith, Robert Hopchak, for his health and long life. For the servants of God, those who are joining us via the internet, for their health and long life. For the servant of God who is in need of our prayers, Yvonne Gaston, for her health and speedy recovery. For the departed servants of God, Evelyn Sudmansik, the very Reverend Proto Presbyter John and Pani Anna Yuchishin, Mary Dore, Michael Fetzko, Joseph DeZora, Andrew Keselek Jr., Elizabeth and Stephen Onifray, and the newly departed servant of God, servants of God, Mary Ward and John Horval for their blessed repose, and all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever.
cherubim and seraphim, six-winged and many-eyed, who soar aloft on their wings and who sing, uh, cry out, and uh, proclaim uh, the triumphant hymn, saying, With these blessed powers, O Lord and lover of mankind, we too cry out and say, Holy are you and all holy. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy and sublime is your glory. Loved your world so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. And after he had come and fulfilled everything in the divine plan for our redemption, on the night on which he was betrayed, or rather on the night on which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy, all pure, and immaculate hands, and having given thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broken, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. In like manner after this, every took the cup, saying, All of you drink of this, this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Remembering, therefore, the saving command and all that has been done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand and the second and glorious coming, and offering to you yours of your own in behalf sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and beg of you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying here before us, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit, amen, 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 that to those who partake of them they may be for the purification of the soul for the remission of sins, for the communion in the Holy Spirit, for the full participation in the kingdom of heaven, for confidence in approaching you, and not for judgment nor condemnation. Furthermore, we offer to you this liturgical sacrifice for those who have fallen asleep in the faith.
especially for our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary. and our God-loving Bishop Gregory. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, in safety, in honor, and in health for many years, so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. Remember, O oh Lord, those who bring their offerings and do good works in your holy churches, and those who are mindful of the poor, and upon all of us bestow your mercies. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. commemorated all the saints again and again in peace let us pray to the Lord for the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified let us pray to the Lord that our God who loves mankind having received them on his holy most heavenly and mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance may bestow upon us in return the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin. Let us beseech the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us beseech the Lord. For all that is good and profitable to our souls and for the peace of the world, let us beseech the Lord. That we pass the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. Christian ending of our life without pain and shame, peaceful and for a good account at the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Having prayed for the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Lord, with full confidence and without condemnation, to dare to call upon you, God our Heavenly Father, and to say to you,
the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. who travel by land and air and cure the sick, O healer of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and bounties and love towards mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. Merciful to me, a sinner. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be attentive. Holy things are for the holy. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe, O Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies, for like Judas will I give you a kiss, but like the penitent thief I confess to you. O Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment nor condemnation, but for the healing of my soul and my body. O Lord, I also believe and confess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body and truly your life-giving blood, which I pray I may worthily receive for the remission of all of my sins and for life everlasting. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for my sins are many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. Precious and all holy on your body, my Lord God, the Savior Jesus Christ, is given to me, rather than the Holy Priest, for the mission of my sins, and for the life of the last of my At this time, we call forward Robert, our newly initiated into the Orthodox faith, so that he may receive communion first. Robert.
Behold, this has touched your lips and shall take away your iniquities and shall cleanse you of all of your sins. O oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Having received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-creating awesome mysteries of Christ, arise, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed that this day will be perfect, holy, and without sin, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might, and forsake us not to put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to the honorable government of our country, to its armed forces, and to all your peoples. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. And to you we give glory and thanksgiving and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Birthday greetings are extended this week to Michelle Lucy. Happy birthday this week, Michelle. To Ashley Zucchelli, Rita Noah Sakmar, not here today. Kenny Mesco, happy birthday this weekend. And to Hannah Cook, wish her happy birthday for us, Stella. I'll see her next week at camp. Sunday School Summer Get Together This is this Tuesday in the Cathedral Auditorium. Please hand in your permission slip today to let us know that you're coming. Coffee Social this morning is sponsored by Stella and Barb. Cathedral Parish Picnic is scheduled for Sunday, August 5th. Uh, Christmas in July Love Tree is set up in the back. Please take an envelope off the tree. Your charity is appreciated. We have reserved the bus to take our children to Camp Nazareth next Sunday. The bus will leave at 1 p.m. And teeter on this morning for the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. Um, Honey Kathy told me that last week we ran out, so the people in the choir loft only got like a small little piece. So you can take double today. If you were in a choir loft, take double today. I have extra. Lost my place now. Much to read in the bulletin, Mountain Hill Playhouse outing. It was a two-week bulletin last week, so uh, trivia night is October 6th. We welcome to our parish this morning, George Simancic, visiting us all the way from Arizona. Welcome, George, and I believe your son, Gregory, is joining us via the internet from Alaska. He had to get up like at four in the morning to watch. We are doing a panahita for his wife, Today, I believe it's your wedding anniversary remembrance, right? And so we will remember Evelyn Semancic in the Panahita this morning. We also congratulate Robert Hapchek for his uh, coming into the Orthodox faith. Panahita this morning, as we mentioned, for Evelyn Semancic, for a very Reverend Proto Presbyter John and Paniana Yachishin, for Mary Dore, Michael Fetzko, Joseph DeZora, Andrew Keselek Jr., Elizabeth and Stephen Onofre, and John Horbal, and Mary Ward this morning. If you recognize the name Semancic, um, I, did, I told her that I wouldn't do this, but I can't help it. That is, George is Susan's brother. Susan Semancic is a good friend of ours who has been here at the cathedral multitude of times over a multitude of years, and we'll just leave it at that. So we'll welcome both of you today. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. from the dead, the prayers of his most pure mother, whose placing of her robe we gloriously celebrate this day, through the prayers of a holy father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and through the prayers of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and he loves mankind.
Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Souls for the saints and the just reborn. 